Welcome to the Country Studies. I hope you have enjoyed our 15 weeks journey to the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland. And I hope that you have learned much about the country whose language you are learning. Lecture 15, week 15, will be about welfare state. Welfare is a system whereby the government undertakes to protect the health and well-being of its citizens, especially those in financial or social need, by means of pensions, grants and other benefits. Lecture plan will cover the following topics. We shall mainly speak about the National Health Service, how it is delivered and given to the citizens, also about the social security system, personal social services and charities. Britain can claim to have been the first large country in the world to have accepted that it is part of the job of government to help any citizen in need and to have set up what is generally known as a welfare state. So if you speak about the United States of America, the foundations for the modern welfare state in the United States were laid by the New Deal programs of the President Franklin Roosevelt. Before the 20th century, the welfare was considered to be the responsibility of local communities. The care provided was very poor, and especially hated institution in the 19th century was the workhouse, where the old, the sick, the mentally handicapped and orphans were sent. People were often treated very harshly in webhouses or given as slaves to equally harsh employers. During the first half of the 20th century, a number of welfare benefits were introduced. These were a small old age pension scheme, partial sickness and unemployment insurance, and unemployment benefits conditional on regular contribution and proof of need. The real Impetus for the welfare state came in 1942 from a government commission headed by William Beveridge and its report on social insurance and allied services. In 1948, the National Health Act turned the report's recommendations into law and the National Health Service was set up. The health and social welfare system is part of everyone's life at Britain. It provides help for anyone who is raising a family or who is elderly, sick, disabled, unemployed, widowed or disadvantaged. Everyone at some point in their lives will receive help from its varied services, ranging from health checks for children, home help for disabled or elderly people, or cash benefits to cover periods of unemployment. The three pillars of the health and social welfare system are the National Health Service. The health of the community is the responsibility of the National Health Service, free to everyone who normally lives in Britain. The personal social services, provided by local authorities for elderly and disabled people, those with mental disorders and for families and their children. Social security, designed to secure a basic standard of living for people who are unemployed, help for families and help towards the cost of disablement. The National Health Service is a central element of the welfare state. It is presented on every high street in the form of local pharmacies and in every community and neighborhood in the form of general practitioners and dental services. The National Health Service was created in 1948 and its principles remain true today that there should be a free comprehensive health service for everyone according to need regardless of their income. The main aims of the National Health Service are clear. They are to improve the health of the nation as a whole by promoting health, preventing illnesses, diagnosing and treating injury and disease, and caring for those with long-term illnesses and disabilities. To achieve these aims, 
The National Health Service provides a comprehensive range of care, and uh, nearly all of which is free. Primary care through family doctors, dentists, and other health care professionals. Secondary care through hospitals and ambulance services. Tertiary care through specialist hospitals treating particular type of illnesses and diseases. Primary care is provided by family doctors, dentists, opticians, and pharmacists who work within the National Health Service as independent practitioners. Other professionals involved in primary care include district nurses, health visitors, midwives, and so others. General practitioners or family doctors are present in every community and they remain the backbone of the health service. They provide essential primary care and act as gatekeepers to other services, referring patients on when necessary. Visits to doctors or dentists may be for treatment or for preventative advice. About 80% of general practitioners work in partnerships or group practices often as members of uh, primary health care teams. Primary health care teams also include health visitors, district nurses and midwives. Midwives who care for women throughout pregnancy, health visitors who promote health for families and are responsible for preventative action, and district nurses who care for people in their homes or elsewhere outside the hospital setting. While primary care groups may be the first point of call, secondary care managed by National Health Service Trusts deal with any further treatment or care someone may need. This can range from health advice to some of the most sophisticated treatment in the world. There are around 300 district general hospitals in England found in many large towns and cities. They provide a range of services from care of the elderly to, mater to maternity service. Almost all district hospitals have accident and emergency departments for emergency admissions. As for tertiary care, some hospitals provide specialist services such as heart and liver transplants, treatments for rare cancers. So these specialist services cover patients over more than one district or region. As well as offering highly specialized treatment, these hospitals are also centers for teaching and international research. The voluntary sector plays an important role in supporting patients and health services. The government gives grants to a large number of voluntary organizations working in health and personal social services in recognition of the valuable work they do. About 11% of the population in Britain is covered by private medical insurance and it is estimated that about three quarters of the people receiving treatment in private hospitals or National Health Service pay beds are funded by health insurance schemes. National Health Service patients are occasionally treated in the private sector in cases where doctors and managers consider it will be good value for money. The scale of private medicine compared to the National Health Service, however, is small. Many overseas patients come to be treated in British private hospitals. For example, Harley Street in London is world famous as a center for medical consultant. Social services provide billions worth care a year to vulnerable or disadvantaged members of society. They cover the whole age range to provide for the poorly cared for child to people who were approaching the end of their life. In between, they care for people with mental health problems, physical disability or learning disabilities. Personal social services are the responsibility of local social services authorities in England and Wales, social work departments in Scotland and health and social services boards in Northern Ireland. The main services they provide are residential care, daycare, services for those confined to home, 
and various forms of social work. The Department of Social Security comprises a small central headquarters which support the Secretary of State for Social Security and a team of ministers in developing policy and five executive agencies. Most of the services in Great Britain are run by the separate agencies. Executive agencies of the Department of Social Securities. They are the Benefits Agency pays most Social Security benefits. The Child Support Agency collects child maintenance from absent parents. The War Pensions Agency administers benefits and delivers services for war pensioners and their dependents. The Information Technology Service Agency develops, implements and supports the IT system which now plays a major role in Social Security. In Northern Ireland, the Social Security Agency administers contributions and benefits. There are three broad categories of Social Security benefit. Contributory benefits, where entitlement depends on a person's record on national insurance contribution. The main contributory benefits are retirement pension, widow's benefits, incapacity benefit, and job seekers allowance. These account for half of Social Security spending. The second income-related benefit. For people whose income falls below a certain level determined according to their family circumstances, these benefits take a person's capital well as their income into account. The income-related benefits are Income support, housing benefit, council tax benefit, disability working allowance, family credit and earnings top up in certain pilot areas. Job seekers allowance has both contributory and income related components. Other benefits depend on conditions such as disability or family needs. Benefits in this group include industrial injuries, Disablement benefit, attendance allowance, disability living allowance, severe disab disablement allowance, and child benefit. There are some comprehension questions for you to do in written form. Don't forget to send it by Thursday. Thank you for your interest in country studies.